This is a re-upload because I messed up last time. I don't want to spread misinformation, so I thought it would be best to re-upload this video with the changes being made. Thanks for pointing out my mistake, and I'm sorry. And with that said, let's get back to the video. What's up guys, the Tech Spot here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing guys how to improve your battery life on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. These tips actually work, so if you don't get battery battery life, then just give me a dislike. But anyways, these will work, so with that said, let's go ahead and show you guys these tips. All right, so these are the best 30 plus tips that you will find on YouTube for saving your battery life. Why? Well, because I'm making this video, and I'm making sure that you guys actually do get better battery life, by just watching this video. Now, a viewer actually requested this video to be made, so if you have any future requests, leave them down below the comments. And with that said, let's get started. All right, now this first tip. All right, now this first tip is where I made the mistake. So just to confirm this, I actually found a credible discussion on discussions.apple.com, and it said, so what are the rules for charging? The most basic one is to charge whenever you want to for as long as you want to. There's no reason to let the device drain completely before charging. In fact, it's a bad idea to do that on a regular basis. And there's no need to wait until it reaches 100% before removing it from the power source. You can charge when it's at 40% and disconnect when it reaches 80% or any other values without it hurting the phone. And you don't have to turn it off to charge it. In fact, you shouldn't. The best practice, however, is to charge the phone overnight every night. As it stops automatically at 100%, you can't overcharge it doing this. You thus start the day with a fully charged phone. And if you configure the phone for automatic backup using iTunes or iCloud, the phone will back up every night when it has a Wi-Fi connection and is asleep. It also mentioned that the worst thing you can do is drain the battery to 0%, then not charge it immediately. After it reaches zero and shuts off, there's a small amount of energy left, but if you leave it uncharged for long, it will go flat and kill the battery. So in conclusion, it's best to charge your battery whenever you can, and letting it die is actually bad for the battery. So as the comment mentions, it's best to keep the charge mostly between 20% to 80% due to the battery types inside the phone. We have come far in battery technologies, and now the iPhone learns the way you charge, so it is best to charge it normally how you usually would. So basically, just plug in your phone and let the iPhone do the optimizing for the charging to make sure that you get the best battery health. Now the second tip kind of goes hand in hand and it is to not use a fast or wireless charger. And about that, for these first two tips, I should have done more research because battery technology has come a long way. So no. Fast charging, wireless charging, and wireless fast charging will not damage your battery's health over the long term. This was just a myth. Charge however you please. All right, so here are two battery saving tips, or actually make that three, to make up for the mistakes. And the first one is to ditch vibrate mode. It sounds pretty crazy, but having your phone set to vibrate on every call, text, and notification drains much more battery than having on silent or ring. So if you can, switch to loud mode and turn and vibrate off. The second one is to not plug in your iPhone when your computer is on standby or sleep mode as your phone may not be actually receiving charge and might just be draining the battery of your iPhone. Only plug it into your computer when your computer is actually running. Now the third one is to head over to settings, battery, and check your battery usage, which apps are using up the most battery, and limit your time in those apps, especially apps like intensive games, as games use up a lot of battery on iPhones. But anyways, the third tip is to open up settings, head down over to accessibility, and over here if you tap on display and text size, at the very bottom you will find auto brightness. I don't know why they hit it over here, but if you do want to save your battery life, turn this on. This will basically make it so their screen dims and undims based on your environment, which will save a ton of battery life because the number one thing that takes up battery life on your device is your screen. This right here is draining a crap ton of battery life. Now, if you lower this, your device will last for so much longer. It's crazy how much battery life your screen uses. It's the number one thing that uses battery life on your device. So if you lower it or turn on auto brightness, then this will save you a ton of battery life. Whenever my phone's battery is low, the number one thing I make sure to do is turn down my brightness because 
then it just lasts forever. It's just the number one thing that makes the biggest difference overall. Now, number five, if your device does have an OLED screen, which are the iPhone 10, 10s, 11 Pro, and Pro Max, okay, those devices just, you can Google it if your device has an OLED screen, but this will make a huge difference turning on dark mode because with an OLED screen, whenever this pitch black displayed, it basically turns off the pixel instead of lighting a black pixel. So this will save you so, so much battery life so I'll just bring that control center force touch and or long press whatever just tap on dark mode and this right here will save you so much battery because now this black area right here where it's completely dark is not using any power to power up the pixel on an OLED screen so it is saving you battery life while using your interface and stuff like that so that's super cool now number six is for OLED screens as well and this is that if you use a colored wallpaper like this one it will definitely use more battery than if you had a black one so if I head over to settings wallpaper and let's just choose any black wallpaper so if I go to stills if you guys can see this one right here uses less battery and if you go to the very bottom they even have a wallpaper right here that is completely black so back in the days iPhones they did not have a colored wallpaper in the background it could not even change it it was just black this allowed for better battery life with those older iPhones and you can do the same with this iPhone so it doesn't have to be completely black you can even do like an earth one but that black real estate around will make it so that you do save battery I don't know why my phone just resprung but I'm back and so yeah all this area where it's just all pitch black again it's not actually being lit up on an OLED screen so it's saving you so much battery life when just sitting on your home screen as well now this is a big one for me and it is to turn off your personal hotspot when you're not using it this uses a shit ton of battery life okay guys so what you want to do is just disable this whenever you're not using a personal hotspot and you will get so much better battery life kind of a no-brainer now the next one is to go back into settings and notifications and over here make sure to turn off or disable notifications for apps that you don't want it for so I don't really use the activity app so I would just disable it for that I know many people do but I don't so I would disable it on every application that I don't need notifications on you could even go and disable certain types of notifications and that will save battery life too which is super cool so go and turn off notifications for every app because every time you do to get a notification your phone vibrates it takes up processing power to show you that notification and it's all like cluttered on your phone it takes up a lot of battery life so disable notifications on apps that you don't need them on now if you go back settings and then display and brightness I was kind of iffy about this but then I researched it and turns out that true tone does actually use some batteries so if you do want to save battery life it is good to turn this off I personally like this feature too much to disable it and to save that little bit of battery life so I personally like to leave it on but if you do want to save battery turn true tone off this is because true tone keeps on changing the color of your screen to match your environment and with it doing so it reduces your battery life now the next thing to do is turn on optimized charging so head over to setting and then head over to battery and over here in battery health you'll find optimized battery charging you actually like says to reduce battery aging iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it so basically helps your battery health by learning your charging rhythm all right so i just changed my wallpaper back because i am running at basically full battery but the next thing to do is silence unknown callers so head over to settings and then phone and over here you guys could scroll down you guys can see silence unknown callers now it says calls from unknown numbers will be silenced sent to voicemail and displayed on the recent list so when your phone is vibrating and lighting up the screen it does use battery life of course it's also ringing making sound so phone calls use a lot of battery life when in the process of you know ringing so if you get a lot of like, scam calls then this is a must do because that does use a lot of battery life the next thing to do is head back over to settings display and brightness and turn on auto lock i know it can be a little bit annoying at times when it just automatically locks your device when you're not using it but the lower you can set it to the better because again the number one thing that uses battery on your phone is your device's screen when your phone screen is lit it's using a ton of battery so i know i set mine to never too but there are many times where i just leave my phone on a desk or something and it's just using battery without me even doing anything to it so it's nice to keep this like at 30 seconds or two minutes or whatever you want to make it sure that when you're not using your phone it's locked so you save a lot of battery life now i know brandon butt did say to leave it at five minutes or never because he thinks that when you unlock your phone it uses a lot of battery life but that is not the case your screen is number one thing that uses the most battery life so it's best to set this as low as possible 
just to make sure that your screen is not on. 30 seconds, one minute, two minute, whatever floats your boat. Now the next thing to do is limit location services. So again, go back over your settings and then privacy. And over here, you guys can see location services. Now every time you have that arrow at the top right there, that means your phone is using location services, which does use battery as your phone is determining where you are located and telling this to apps. So that does use a lot of battery life and it's kind of a privacy concern. So I would go through all your apps and make sure that you only are using location services on apps that you actually need your location and set it to only to while using so that when you are on your home screen or somewhere else that it is not using your location services on the app so just do that all right i promise location services use up a lot of battery and there's also location alerts right here so you're going to turn that off too all right now let's say you're sitting at home okay and you're connected to cellular instead of wi-fi for some reason okay cellular does use more battery life than wi-fi so i suggest that if you do have wi-fi available use wi-fi don't just leave your wi-fi disabled and have your cellular keep on searching because cellular again does use more battery as opposed to Wi-Fi. Now the next thing is kind of a gimme, but it is low power mode and I am just surprised by how well this works. So if you head over to settings and the battery can enable low power mode from here, but I would put it in my control center. So head over to control center and customize controls and make sure you have low power mode over here. So it'll probably be right there, tap on the plus and it should appear right here. So every time you want to enter low power mode and save some extra battery, just tap that toggle and now you are in low power mode. If you don't use low power mode, what are you doing? It just works so well. It's like incredible. So again, when my phone is low on battery, I usually turn on low power mode and also lower my brightness because those two things make the biggest difference difference. Now the next thing to do is head back over to settings and then Siri and search and turn off Hey Siri. When your phone is on a desk or something, it is constantly listening for you to say Hey Siri. So if it See, look at that. It was listening for that. All right. So it's waiting for me to say that. And with it waiting to hear me say that is using battery life. So if you don't use it, I don't use it that often, so I would just turn it off and save some more battery life. Now, another thing to do is turn off raise to wake so it's in display and brightness and you guys can see raise to wake. I already have it disabled because first off, I get super annoyed by it. I'm just holding my phone, for example, in a car where it's dark and I'm not using it and I kind of just move my phone a little bit and my screen turns on and it's super annoying. Every time it detects like the like, slightest motion of you kind of like picking up maybe, you know, it thinks that you want to use it, but you don't, it will turn on your screen and that will reduce your battery life. So I would turn raise to wake off because again, it also does use a gyroscope or accelerometer on your phone to determine like if you actually picked it up or not. So turn that feature off, save some battery life. The next thing to do is head over to settings general and then software update. Now for me, it's not gonna pop up because I do have a jailbreak which disables updates, but it should pop over here with an option to disable automatic updates. You wanna turn off automatic updates as automatic updates Again, it's kind of downloading in the background the new software file. So with that, it does take up a lot of battery life as downloading a like very big like 10 gig file or like 3 gig, whatever it is. So this both uses up space and takes up the battery life on your phone. So disable automatic updates. And if you're a jailbreak user like me, then of course you don't want to update. So you don't want to be forced to update automatically by that either. Now the next one is to switch from push emails to fetch and this will save you a lot of battery life. So head down over to settings and the password and accounts. And at the bottom you guys can see fetch new data. Tap on the option and you guys can choose any one of your emails. So for example, this email right here, you guys can see I set it to fetch. And if I go back over here, this iCloud one, you can set it to fetch or manual. Now, if you set it to fetch, what it does is it checks for new emails every like 10 minutes or whatever you set it to. So with fetch, whenever you get an email, email you won't see it right away but after your phone refreshes like after 10 minutes then you will see it and with manual what it does is every time you open up the mail app that's when it will refresh the email so setting it to fetch or manual does save a lot of battery life because it does not have to constantly push new emails directly to you and show you the notification right away so set it to different inboxes whatever you want but i'd save mine at push because i like to see my emails right away now another thing to do is turn off airdrop when you're not using it now you guys can see if i go ahead and an airdrop you guys can see if any device is just on or just unlocked it'll show right here so this type of device is actually going to show up even if i'm not using airdrop because that's what i set it to so if i head over to settings and then go back over to general and then airdrop you guys can see i have it set to everyone but if you're not using airdrop just turn it off because otherwise it's constantly displaying airdrop to other devices around or nearby contacts and as you would imagine that does use battery life so only turn on airdrop when you are actually using it it's kind of like the same thing with a personal hot 
hot spot. Now, the animations on her device actually use up battery life too. You guys can see now the animation kind of genie effect, which does use a lot of battery. So if you head over to settings and then accessibility, and over here, if you tap on motion, you can actually reduce motion. So this will actually save a lot of battery life as your phone is not processing all these animations and it's a lot more subtle and simple this way. So this does use a lot less battery life. And you can also turn on preferred crossfade transitions. So every time you go back in menus, it's a little bit different, but it's a lot more smooth. And again, it does save you some battery life as well. You can see that over here. So pretty simple and does kind of look cooler too. Now the next one is to limit your widgets that show up over here. If you have a ton of widgets running over here, of course it's going to use a lot of battery. You got all these weather widgets, uh, battery widgets, and all that stuff running over here. So we'll use more battery and it will take more time to load. Now another thing to do is not close out of your apps and you'll be like, what? Wait, what? How does that save battery? Well, every time you close out these apps, for example, if I close out my settings, when I tap on it to open it up, it does have to reload the entire application. And this is even more intensive for bigger apps like games as a rerun the entire game from the title screen which you could imagine uses a lot of battery life so if you could keep the app open just leave it open in multitasking tray it's not really hurting you and it'll just load right away and it'll save you some battery life win-win situation now going hand in hand with that i would go to settings general and then background app refresh and i would turn this off or disable it for whatever application they don't want it on basically when the app is not actually open but it's still running in your multitasking tray it will refresh the app to make sure that it fetches all the new information all the new tweets and all that good stuff which does use batteries so you only wanted to load that stuff up when you actually open the app and to do that all you gotta do is disable the toggles right here on individual applications or you can turn it off completely in background app and refresh right here and turn it off and also when you are on cellular and it's background app refreshing again cellular does use more battery life so it will use more battery life if you set it to this option as opposed to just wi-fi now this is a pretty crazy one when you're not using your iphone place it face down the iphone actually has sensors so if you get a notification or something it won't vibrate and display the notification because it does sense that your iphone is face down which is a really cool feature so when it's face up you will get more notifications and your phone will light up and all that stuff which does make your battery life go down quicker so when you set your phone down and want to say battery life set it down like this instead of like this now another thing to do is turn off dynamic wallpapers so if i head over to settings over here and then wallpaper these dynamic wallpapers over here they do move very subtly so that does use battery of course so i would disable these or just use a different wallpaper preferably a one with black background and also when you go to set a wallpaper i would turn off perspective zoom perspective zoom is where basically when you turn your phone like this and it kind of suddenly moves a little bit which does use battery life and many people like me don't even notice it so it's good to just turn it off right here so let's turn it off and then set your wallpaper now let's say you are out and about going about your day you're outside right you're not connected to wi-fi but you're connected to your cellular okay now cellular does use more battery life right but here's another thing when you are connected to cellular and your wi-fi is still on you can see it's not completely disabled right there. Your Wi-Fi is still searching for different networks to connect to. So what I would do is head over to settings and whenever you're on cellular, just turn off your Wi-Fi because you're not going to be using it. So might as well have it stop searching. Now when you turn it off from control center, it does not completely turn off. Now you guys can see it is turned off. But if I turn it on from over here and if I go back over here, I can see it just kind of fades out. It doesn't completely turn off, which is annoying. And the next thing to do is head over to settings and then privacy again. And at the very bottom, you guys will find analytics and improvements. And it's good to turn these off because what it's doing is sharing your bugs and diagnostic and usage information of your iPhone and sending it to Apple in the background, which does use battery life on your phone. It says that right there is help improve its products and services by automatically sending daily diagnostic and usage data, which again does use batteries. So turn these off and you will save some battery life and whew, that's basically it for me today guys hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful if i didn't miss any tips or tricks that you want to mention down below in the comments leave it down below and i'll be sure to check it out but yeah guys with these tricks you guys will save so much battery life and last thing before i head out if i head over to settings and then battery and head over to battery health if over here is in the 80 percent or lower then i would recommend that you opt for a battery replacement by apple because you do need a new battery and then make sure to take care of that new battery by using steps one and two that I showed in this video. Anyways, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. This is TechSpot, and I'm out.